Welcome back to my guide on complex variables. Today's video is going to be about the residue theorem. This is probably one of the most important theorems in complex variables. Here's how it works. Say I have a complex function f of z with a bunch of singular points, say z0, z1, z2, all the way to zn. What the residue theorem says is that the contour integral of f of z over a curve which encloses all of these singular points is just 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of f at each of those singular points. Just for your interest, I'm going to prove this theorem to you. Let's start by making a diagram to help us. Say we have a big closed contour in the complex plane that encloses these three singular points inside it, z1, z2, and z3. There could be more, but for now I'm just drawing three for the sake of simplicity. The contour integral of f over this entire region is only due to the contributions of these singular points. Why? Well, if I draw three really small circles over these singular points and make a bunch of small cuts at these circles, then since this resulting contour, I'll call it C1, doesn't enclose any singular points, its contour integral is zero, thanks to Cauchy's theorem, which we covered a couple of videos ago. If I made the size of these gaps approach zero, then I would find that the anti-clockwise integral around this purple curve C plus the clockwise integrals around each of these circles P1, P2, and P3 equals the anti-clockwise integral along the entire curve C1. It's very similar to what we did last time. Since we know that the latter is zero, we're just left with this expression. I can now isolate the integral around the entire curve C and use the fact that the clockwise integrals are just the negatives of the anti-clockwise integrals to show that the integral of a complex function over a contour C is only due to the contributions of the singular points inside that contour. And this is where the Leroy series comes in. Around each of these singular points, z1, z2, and z3, which correspond to the enclosing circles p1, p2, and p3, I can expand f of z as a Leroy series. Let's look at the Leroy series of f around z1. Note the presence of the extra 1 in the subscript to denote the fact that these are the Leroy series coefficients around z1. If I take the integral of f over the contour p1, then I know I can split that integral up into two parts, one of which is the integral over the analytic part of the Laurent series, and the other is an integral over the principal part. I can switch the order of the integration and summation, which allows me to rewrite this expression as the following. Now the integrals for the analytic part of the Laurent series all disappear because of Cauchy's theorem, since the contour integral of a function over a region where it's holomorphic is zero and this analytic portion corresponds to the part of the function that is holomorphic over that region. So now we're left with the integrals over just the principal part of the Laurent series. If we look at this last integral, the one which I have b sub j1 starting from the index of 2, then what I can do is that because p1 is just a circle, say of radius rho 1, I can write my complex variable z as z1 plus rho 1 e to the i theta which is just the polar representation of a circle in the complex plane. If I take the differential of this, then I can see that dz is just rho 1 times i times e to the i theta d theta, where theta varies from 0 to 2 pi. Now when I'm doing a contour integral around the whole circle, that's the same as keeping the radial position rho 1 constant and varying theta from 0 to 2 pi. Because of this, I can write my integral as the integral from 0 to 2 pi of b sub j1 over rho 1 times e to the i theta to the power j times rho 1 times i times e to the i theta d theta. I can simplify this expression to leave myself with only a single exponential. So I get b sub j1 times i over rho 1 to the power j minus 1 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the exponential of negative i times j minus 1 times theta d theta. Integrating this gives us b sub j1 times i over rho 1 to the j minus 1 times negative 1 over i times j minus 1 times the exponential of negative i times j minus 1 times theta. And the limits are from 0 to 2 pi. Now if I apply the limits, then I can see that at theta equals 0, my exponential is just the exponential of 0, which is 1. And at theta equals 2 pi, I can apply Euler's formula, which I'll write over here for your own verification. By Euler's formula, I know that the sine term is zero in both cases, since j is an integer and the sine of an integer multiple of 2 pi is always zero. I also know that the cosine of 2 pi and the cosine of zero are both one. So my integral expression would just be one minus one, which is zero. 
Note that this is true only for integer values of j that aren't 1. If j did turn out to be 1, then this denominator would be undefined and we wouldn't be able to use this integral. So if we go back to the integral over the circles p1 of the complex function f of z, then the only term we're left with is the b1 term of the Laurent series, or the residue term. In fact, we can easily find this integral by applying Cauchy's integral formula that we touched on in the last video. What we end up with is that the closed integral in the anti-clockwise direction along p1 of f of z dz is just 2 pi i times b11, where b11 is the residue of the function expanded around the point z1. Now you can see why the coefficient b11 is called a residue, because it's the only term that's left when we do the contour integration of the Laurent series. Now that I've shown this result for one singular point inside the closed contour C, I can show the exact same thing for the other singular points Z2 and Z3. The end result is that when there are three singular points, the contour integral of f of z over the closed curve C is just 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of the Laurent expansions at Z1, Z2, and Z3. If there is more than three singular points, this naturally leads to the more general result of the residue theorem which is that the contour integral of f of z over a curve which encloses a bunch of singular points is 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of f at each of those singular points. A couple of things to note before I go. One is that if there are no singular points enclosed by c, then the integral is zero, because the residue of a non-singular point is zero, since the entire principal part of the Laurent series around the non-singular point would of course be zero. Another thing to note is that, particularly at the beginning, the proof of the residue theorem started off very similar to the proof of the Cauchy's integral formula. So if you understood it last time, hopefully you understood it this time, and vice versa. If you still don't get it, you can always write an angry comment below, and I'll be sure to respond to you passive-aggressively. Anyway, that does it for the residue theorems. Thanks for watching.